All right, welcome back. Today we're gonna to show you how to run your own ChatGPT like interface right in your own home lab, complete with state-of-the-art models and a responsive web UI that doesn't involve any data leaving your house. So let's jump in. And if you're new here, hi, this is Sonoran Tech, where we cover a wide range of tech topics from hardware to home labs to coding and current events. If you like that content, please hit the sub button and leave a comment to let me know what topics you're interested in seeing. All right, so in front of us, you can see the standard ChatGPT interface, which maybe you have used more than once, um, since it is kind of the de facto, hey, I wanna use an LLM type interface. Now, there are a couple of problems with ChatGPT that maybe you're concerned about. The first is if you want access to the latest models, like you can see I have ChatGPT 4.0, you have to pay a pretty substantial monthly fee. I've been playing with it and it's like 20 bucks a month, which may not be desirable to most people. It certainly isn't desirable to me, but I've been doing it just for experimental purposes. The other issue is you are sharing your data with OpenAI and maybe you don't wanna do that. Maybe you don't want them kind of learning about the queries you're asking, training their models on your responses to those, etc. And in particular, if you start to use something like ChatGPT where you're feeding in content you created like documents or other things, like maybe that's pretty private information that you don't want to share with another company. And, in, and in speaking of other companies, many companies prohibit you from using AI tools like ChatGPT for just that reason. They don't want you sharing corporate information with an external entity. And maybe you don't want to do that for your household either. So what we're going to look at today actually today and in a series of videos is how you set up an infrastructure like this at home. And believe it or not, it's super simple thanks to two free tools. The first is Olama and then Open Web UI are gonna be the basis for this. So what we're gonna look at today is how do you set up a basic chat interface just like the one in front of us, completely self-hosted at home in your home lab with the models at home in your home lab where you have the option to choose from a variety of models and very good models from Meta, Google, etc., and get that running at home where your data isn't shared anywhere else. And we will start with just a simple chat interface and over videos we'll build from there to look at how do you do image generation? How do you build your own document repository of your own models? I'm sorry, of your own documents to then query with common uh, large language models. So as I mentioned, there's two pieces of software we're going to use for this. The first is Olama, which you can see here. And this is basically going to be your platform which hosts your large language models. And they have packaged it all up to be super nice and easy to run. And then Open Web UI will be the web interface on top of that, which gives you something like this. Uh, on top of your Olam interface. So those are the two pieces of software you're going to need. The one other thing you'll likely need is a reasonable video card. Now, you probably have that if you're using a common PC or even a laptop, you're probably gonna be pretty good. You may hit some problems with the amount of video memory on the card and that may prevent you from using the largest of models and I'll talk about that later. But you know, a standard PC with a, a video card will get you going. If you do not have any form of video card, that will likely be a problem. You can make all this work, but it'll be extremely slow. And I actually did a video about this where I took like just like a, a compute server, which I have in my home lab, and it's just, you know, Xeon processors, no video card, and I ran some large language models on it. And it is excruciatingly slow. If you're used to pretty quick text generation, you can forget that. Uh, it is like one word every few sentences, every few seconds. So when we get started, the first thing we're going to do is install Olama. And so I am running on Ubuntu Linux. So we'll show you how to do that. You literally just go to the Olama website, click download, and on Linux, it's as simple as one command. So I'll bring up a console here and we'll just run this to get it installed. All right, Olama should be installed and up and running. It really is that easy. And so you can uh, learn about it just by running the Olama command and you can see uh, the options it gives you. And so what you wanna do is after you get this installed, just try running it on the command line and get an understanding for what it does. It actually has a good chat-like interface, but it is command line driven. Now, the first thing you'll wanna do is actually in download some models. And you can see here, if I do Olama list, you can see I have no models installed. So to find out what models are available, go back to the website, click on models. And right here, you can see all the models that are available. Now for a basic chat model, I'd recommend something like Meta's Llama model or Google's Gemma model are reasonable starting points. Now, again, based on the video card you have, the amount of graphics memory, et cetera, you may want to pick 
uh, different size models because you just may hit a point where it doesn't work. Now, I'm running uh, an RTX 3090 Ti, I believe, with 32 gigabytes of uh, video card memory. Now, with um, when I was playing with this earlier, I tried Llama 3.1 with the 405 billion parameter size model and immediately got an error. Now it took a long time to download only to find I needed like 190 gigabytes of uh, video memory to work. But we'll just do something like we'll do uh, Google's Gemma 2 model and we'll do the 27 billion parameter model. So this, this should give us a pretty good experience. So the way you do that is, by the way, you can usually scroll down and get the exact commands. You do a llama run Gemma 2 colon 27b for 27 billion but first we'll we'll just pull it and install it all right so now we have pulled and installed the gemma 2 model and you can see it installed here so now if we want to use it you just do this And there we go. So now we have a simple chat interface to the model and I can say tell me uh, five fun science facts there you go. And if you wanted, you can even pull up, I have BTOP here, which I won't show, but you could pull up BTOP and watch your graphics card uh, working hard at this. So we have, that, uh, we have that model installed. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna grab another one, just so we have two models to compare against when we actually set these up through a web interface. So we'll go back to the Alama website. And you know what, why not? We'll do, um, we'll pick Llama 3.2 and we'll go with a smaller uh, three, where is it? Uh, 3 billion parameter model. So that's the default. So perfect. Now let's try that out. We'll ask it the same question. This is actually a much more verbose model than the other one. I'm not evaluating the results, but you can see we have both working and uh, both models working. And that's going to be important. And we'll list both the models. There we go. So, okay, so we have Olama installed and running. It was super easy. We have two models. Now, the other thing to know about Olama, which is going to be important, is it can serve these models through a web interface or through a REST interface, which then you can access through a tool called Open Web UI. And that's what we're going to set up next. And you can see right here, uh, Olama Serve is kind of an important piece of this. And there is a service that automatically installs with Olama and makes it available through a, an HTTP port. But we'll get to that in a minute. So now that we have Alama installed, the next tool we're going to install is Open Web UI, which will give us that nice uh, web-based chat interface. And you can see right here, openwebui.com is the place you go to get it. And right here, when you go into the GitHub, there's all kinds of instructions about how to install it, what it can do, et cetera. And like I said, we're gonna keep it simple for today. We're just gonna do a simple installation connected to Alama so we have a chat interface. In future videos, we'll talk a little bit more about how we get more advanced with this and I'll show you some of the other features. Now, the way we're gonna install Open Web UI is through a Docker container and we're going to use Portainer for that. So I have Portainer running on an Ubuntu server in my home lab. And so I'm gonna run that on a separate instance from Olama. Now, this is something you'll have to figure out when you do your setup, which is you can run Open Web UI and Olama on the same machine. Obviously, that you want that to be the machine that has your graphics card, but you may have a home lab setup where you're running something like a Raspberry Pi or other servers that are serving up your containers and other interfaces for your household, in which case you may end up separating the Olama service onto a separate machine from the Web UI, and that's what I'm doing. I am running Portainer on a server, and my graphics card is actually sitting in my gaming PC, so I'm going to leave Olama sitting there. So I have Portainer open right here. And then if we go back to the Open Web UI documentation, you can see they have a really good documentation uh, set up where it says how to install it using Docker, and most importantly, how to install it using Docker Compose. Now you can go with the straightforward bare Docker installation, but here with Docker Compose, we have a file, a Docker Compose file that we can copy and drop directly right into Portainer. So I copy this. I'm gonna go over to Portainer. I am gonna to go to Stacks, and I'm gonna add a stack. And I will call this Open web UI and I'm just going to paste this right in and we'll have faith that uh, copied code from the internet works so here we go uh, so anyway we'll just confirm this will pull this image down uh, it'll uh, open up port 3000 and it does store some state uh, locally but we'll just keep it simple we're just doing this out of the box so great 
So I'll just say deploy the stack. Stack successfully deployed. Let's take a look at this. And it is starting. So we'll just wait for this to finish starting and then we'll open up the web UI console and we'll take a look at it. All right, the open web UI uh, container is up and running. So we can go to port 3000, take a look. That is not going to work. So let's just grab the right IP address here. And there we go. Looks like it worked. So what we need to do is you actually need to create an account. And there are some settings, I think, behind this where you can kind of disable the account creation and just make it just open to whoever comes in all the time. But you can figure out how to configure that. So I will go through the account setup process. All right, so we are logged in and here you go. You can see a very ChatGPT-like interface where you can start to enter your queries and have a conversation with it. And similar to ChatGPT in the upper left here, you can select the model to use. Now, here's the interesting thing. There's no models because we haven't gone and connected this to Olama. If Olama was running on the same machine as this, I think it might automatically integrate, but that's not the setup we're running. So what we need to do is connect Olama to Open Web UI. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the machine that is running uh, Olama, and we're just gonna confirm that the service is up and running. And yep, Olama is up and running. Now by default, Olama runs on the port, I think it's 11434. We can, the thing we're gonna do is let's just confirm that the service is actually responding. And we'll do that using uh, the local host URL, 11434. And as you can see, you curl that and you see Olama is running. Now, what we wanna do is make sure that Olama is accessible from the IP of the machine. And so the IP of this machine happens to be right there. And no, that didn't work. So here's how we fix that. We need to open the Olama service configuration file. And what we need to do is add one more environment variable right here. So adding this environment variable will uh, ensure that Olama binds uh, to, the, to the IP address of the machine as well as localhost. Now, if you do some searching around for this, you may see some advice to say, put this in, 11434, put the port in. I found that didn't work. So it took me uh, a little bit of time to get this sorted out, but once I removed the port number, it worked just fine. So we will do that. All right, so I made a bit of a mistake there. Maybe you caught it. I had a colon here instead of an equals, so I'll fix that, save it. Now we will actually do the uh, restart. And there we go. Perfect. So now we can access Olama through the IP. Now what we can do is we can go back to Open Web UI and uh, configure it on its side. So you go back to the Open Web UI UI, go into here and click on settings, and you're going to want to do admin settings. Click on connections. And you can see there's a connection to the open API API. Like if you wanted to bring in external models, you can do it there, but we want to define the Olama API. So we'll turn that on. And as you can see, I had pre-populated the IP address of my Olama configuration. We'll click this to verify it. Server connection verified. Perfect. So just out of paranoia, I'm just going to refresh open web UI and I will go click on new chat. And you can see there's, if I pull this down, look at this. So here are the two models we installed on Olama and you can see them automatically populated in the chat here. So let's give it a try. We'll do five fun facts. Cows kill more people than sharks. There you go. Snow's metal on Venus. I think it told me that before that was consistent. And so here you can uh, look down here, very similar inter interface. You can copy, you can read it aloud. Uh, send feedback. You can actually ask it to continue the response, which doesn't always work. Um, and then I could switch the model. I'd say, tell me 10 fun science facts. And you can see here is the response from the llama model. And there you go. So that we're going to wrap it up right here. Said we would keep it simple for day. For today, that's all you have to do is install a llama, bring down the models you want, install a container with open web UI and connect the two, and it does all the magic for you. And with that, you have your own ChatGPT like interface running right in your home lab, not sharing data outside at all. And in upcoming videos, we'll look how to get a little bit more advanced with this. Leave it here for now, and we'll see you next time.